saja ang pagnubay at ang bagas na magbibigay lakas sa timuhay matapat alam na sa
And uh, once again, we offer this service unto you, uh, this ceremony that we're about to do, that uh, all these things be according to your word and according to your will. And uh, let uh, everything be in your power, let everything be subdued by your Holy Ghost, by your Holy Spirit. Guide us, O oh Lord, and control this uh, uh, activity that we have, control this service that we're doing for you. Now bless your words, O oh Lord. These are just the letters to us, and it is you who give it life. So we do uh, request, O oh Father, we pray uh, that you quicken all the words that we heard this morning, that it may live not in our hearts and in our souls, converting us, O oh Father, from what uh, we have and uh, what we're going to receive. Thank you, Lord. And uh, we offer all this service and all these things in your precious name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all be seated. Well, yes, uh, we witness uh, this uh, morning uh, the wedding of our uh, brethren. Before we proceed to, to the ceremony, we just uh, want to have like a small, uh, small message to everyone. Aren't you glad this morning? Amen. 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 Are you expecting something from the Lord? Amen. Amen. I believe we have some empty seats available inside. Whoever is uh, who wants to come in, we still have like three seats available uh, to, to to be filled in. I, there are more at the back now. So this morning, <clears throat> remember last uh, last week we have discussed about the authority, and we have discussed about. Uh, uh, how God controls things. So God is, uh, is the maker of the universe as what we heard from Hebrews 1. That He created all things. When He created all things, He controls all things. Amen. Remember that when He controlled the universe, that everything in the universe were done is because of the earth. It's because right. of the earth became the center of the universe, the center of the universe. The reason that it is only earth that we have the living things on because he is the only planet that has life. Okay. Until now, the scientists are still looking for some life. That's why they created, like they started searching, uh, doing all the astrophysics and astro, astrobiology. But until now, they haven't found life yet anywhere else. And since uh, for so long, for a long period of time, they've been searching, but they cannot find any. Because it is only Earth that God has granted life. So God has granted life, and the purpose of God is to be with his creation, that's why he created earth for him to, to sit on, for him to, to tabernacle himself in. Amen. So it's only earth, that's why the earth became special. And we know that uh, through all the studies that we had in the past, that the tabernacle right now is the souls that we have, and God is living in our souls. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when God created everything, that he wants to control everything, that all things were placed in balance for the purpose of the earth being on its own place. He's not supposed to remove something from any other place in the space. It's because that it will disturb the earth. Yeah. And it's the same thing that happened uh, uh, in your personal lives. The same thing that happened in the church. All things that are happening is for the purpose of balancing us. Yeah. All, the pur all the things that happen within the church is the purpose of the balance of the church. To place the church in the proper time, in the proper way, until the time that maturity comes for its purpose. There's a and for everything that is happening, only those people who love the Lord, all the things that are happening is for your own good. Amen. So, on the readings that we had, you will see that uh, God, when He created, <clears throat> in uh, Genesis 1 again, let's say, uh, go back, and uh, let us say, let us make man in our image. When God says that he, we have to make man in our image, the image of God at the time is a spirit, is the form of the spirit. So when he created man in his image, after our likeness, that's what he said. After our image, after our likeness, <clears throat> and let them have dominion over the fish. So in his likeness, he's already having a dominion. In his image, meaning God in the spirit, to have a dominion over all things in the spirit form. So when he created man, that's what uh, in, in 27, so God created man in his own image. So the image of man that was created first is not the image of the, the flesh that we're seeing right now. The first image of man is a spirit man, which is in the image of God. So when God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So he created a male and female spirit man. 
We're just reading the scripture, and that's what the scripture told us. So, this spirit man that he created out of Adam, and the name of that spirit man is just Adam. A male and female spirit man whose name is Adam. So, whether it's a male or female, the name is Adam. There's Amen. only one. Yeah. It means it's the oneness of it's the oneness of the spirit man. So, in the form of the spirit, it's because the man God created man in the spirit is because of his oneness. He has to promote the oneness is because he wants to promote himself in his family. So, reason he created all the earth, he became of the universe, he became the God of the universe. So, when he created man in his likeness, he was telling man that time that now you now will be the God of earth. I will be the God of the universe, and now I'm you're you're my perfect creation, you're my perfect image, and you will now be the God of earth. It's the same. Are, are you seeing the? Are you seeing the, the, the uh, how how God how the pattern of God was? So He created the universe as a God of the universe, and He created man as a God of the earth. So He said that you will be you will be having a dominion. When uh, God said uh, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and they were still in the spirit form. So being fruitful and to multiply is that to multiply in the flesh. That's the plan of God. So when he said to multiply, they were still in the spirit form, they have to multiply, they are supposed to multiply during the time that they were still in the spirit form. Yes. Are you seeing it? <clears throat> he didn't say during the time that they were given the flesh that they have to multiply, but they have to multiply when they were still in that spirit form. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> God bless them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, when he says subdue, all the spirit that lingers on earth. Lahat ng spirit po kasi hindi, it's not only the spirit of God that was there at the time. It was not just Edom and Edom that was there. It was not just his creation. Because at that time, Satan was also on the earth. So when Satan was there, when he says subdue the earth, he, he, he was saying that subdue all the spirits. Even Satan, you have the right to subdue Satan. That's right. You have the right to subdue the enemy. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of this, uh, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So all creation, he has a dominion. Living things, we you know the, the process of, uh, you know, the levels of creation that God, that uh, man is the highest form of creation. When he created the earth, then he created the past, then he created the animals, and then he created man. Where man, when, where one fits on each, up, up on the other, are you getting it? When, when earth was created, <clears throat> the earth is required so that the plants can, can feed on it. The plants, when it grew up, the plant is required so that the animals can feed on it. That's right, yes. When the animals grew up, the animals were required so that the man can feed on it. That's right. So it's, it's, it's the process, it's the process and the, uh, the hierarchy of the creation of man. So you know that it is man who has the highest form of creation. That's why he was given the dominion, that's why he was given the authority. <clears throat> Are you getting it? <clears throat> so, the purpose of God, when He created all things, He says that, okay, I will be with you. It's because that is my creation, and everything was so perfect. So I will go with you, so you will be finding that God was looking after them. Every day, every night, He was looking after them, He was feeding them, he, he loved them so much, that everything was provided to them. Until such time that He saw that Adam is lonely. So He says that, uh, uh, it's not good for man to be alone, Amen. so I have to remove somebody from him, something from him for them to be, because he created both men and female together. Are you getting it? Yes. So, after the spirit man, he created the flesh. That's why in the second chapter of the script of the book of Genesis, you will be finding that there's the forming of the flesh. He was formed out of the dust. Created in his image in the spirit, but he was formed out of the dust. So the creation of the flesh is the forming of him out of the dust. Are you still with me? Amen. After that, when he says that it is not good for man to be alone, he started separating man, woman, from the man. And the thing that he just took is the rib of Adam. So he didn't say that I'm going to create the woman from the dust. What God did is to take the rib of Adam, so it's already part of man. 
So when the woman was taken out, the woman was already part of man from the very beginning. But he is a byproduct. She, she, she was a byproduct of Edom. The woman that came out of Edom is a byproduct because it's not. There's already a bone that it started. From that bone, everything grew up. Grew up. Came out. <clears throat> Are you with me? Yes. It's not unlike Adam that he was created from the dust. Well, the woman, he, she was created from the bone. So the woman became a byproduct of man. Yes. It is not just like what happened as the creation of man from the dust. So you're still with me? Yes. So when she was taken out, the flesh became the byproduct. However, the spirit is not the byproduct. Yes. When the spirit was divided, it was the separation of the man and the woman. It's the male and female, the separation between the two. So spirit is not a byproduct of man. Are you seeing it? When he says that created, he created man in his image, in the image of God, he created man and woman. That's a male and female. So when he when the woman was separated, the the, the spirit is exactly the same spirit. It's not a byproduct of Adam. However, the flesh was a byproduct of Adam. So that's the difference between the two. After the fall, you will be finding that all of us are also byproduct of what? Of our parents. All the people after that became, all the people became a byproduct of sexual, sexual intercourse. Uh, uh, forgive me for saying that, but it is, it is the process that happened that we, our flesh, became a byproduct. However, our spirits still came from God. Amen. Amen. All the spirits still came from God. That's why that spirit that was split up is still a spirit that came from God. Right. However, the flesh became a byproduct. Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. So the flesh became a byproduct, but the spirit came from God. And every time that people will be giving birth, still the, 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 all the birds are by product of a love marriage or a marriage between a man and a woman. However, the spirit of life still comes from God and it cannot be it cannot be created by anyone. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> so the purpose of God is with his family. So he says that I will be with my family as long as they will be in my work. So the first thing that he did is to put his to put them to abide them in his word. So here is my word. You have dominion over all things. Do all things except doing this thing. Don't you, don't you eat from the thing that is in the midst of the garden. By the time that you eat from it, you will surely die. God was with them the whole time. Wherever they go, he was fed. So when Adam was separated, it's the same thing that God and that Adam is doing with them. With, with Eve, I would say. So wherever it goes, Adam follows her. Wherever Adam goes, he follows her. It's because it's the same thing with man and God. Wherever the man was, he's not God when he goes with the man. He's not going to the creation, the other creation, but he always goes with man. So, men, when they know that God is there, they run after God. Amen. That's the thing. That's, that's the relationship that they have. That God is already here. Come and let's go to God. That's the thing that's happening during the time of Adam and, Adam and Eve. Whenever Adam and Eve is there, God is going to walk down on earth, and the only thing that he's going to look for is for the man. Yes. Uh, are, you, are you seeing what I'm saying? Amen. So when Eve and Adam were separated, it's the same thing that happened with them. Why? It's because that the first time that Adam saw the woman, he fell in love with her. He didn't know that there would be a woman that will come out from her, but the first time that he saw Eve, and it's still not Eve, because the name is just a woman, the name is still Adam. It is an Adam woman, a woman Adam. Because Eve became Eve when he, she became the mother of all living. Remember that? The meaning of Eve is the mother of all living. But her name was not Eve yet, so her name was still Adam that time. So wherever Adam go, the, the woman Adam follows. Wherever the woman Adam go, the, the, the male Adam follows. Are you seeing that? <clears throat> so as long as the woman is still with man, she is always strong. Because their strength is together whenever they are, they are two. They are twain. 
the strength of us is always in our God. So God says that I am your strength. I am your stronghold. When you say that I am your strength, I am your stronghold, it means that all the strength that we have is always to God. Amen. So the strength of the woman is always to her man. That's right. That's why she became a weaker vessel. It's because that she is the flesh is always weak because she was just a byproduct. The flesh is just a byproduct. That's why she became a weaker vessel. Unlike the spirit, because the spirit is equal. So when they were given to Adam, it's the same dominion. Whatever Adam says, the whole creation will follow. Amen. At the same, at the same token, whatever Eve says, the whole creation will follow. Because they have the equality that time. It's because the, the spirit came from God. Are you getting it? So they have the equality that time. That the spirit. So whatever Eve says. Everything, the whole, the whole creation will follow, even, even if Adam doesn't know. But Adam is trusting that all things that he will be doing is in accordance to his will. Amen. So when he, give, when he gave her command, all the things that will come up is because the, the trust is there, the love is there, and the loyalty is there. These are the three things that you will be seeing that will bind the love of, that, that will build the relationship. So it is the love, it is the trust, and it is the loyalty. <clears throat> so God went with the woman, and that's the correct union. Adam looking after his wife day and night, even before he sleep, he's just looking at the wife. Oh, how beautiful she was, how beautiful she is. When you're in love, the first, the first time that you saw your wife, or your, your girlfriend, or your bride-to-be, the first time that you saw her, there's something inside that you don't know what to do. Like uh, you can, it's an uncomfortable feeling that uh, what you, you, you want to express something that you cannot express it at the time that you saw her. Is it true? Yeah. When 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 the true love hits you, you will be finding that there's something, there's something itching inside that you don't know, and you don't know what feeling was that. The only thing that you know is that you want to see her again. Yes, amen. On the same hand, on the woman, it's the same thing, it's the same feeling. That once she, once, once she fell in love with someone, even though she doesn't know the name yet, oh, yung pogi naman niya. Pogi pa lang yun. She doesn't know the, she doesn't know the attitude yet of the one, but because of the outline, the outside appearance, she is already beautiful or handsome, I would say. He's, uh, he's already handsome. She, with the looks, that's the first impression. That's the first impression. So that first, the feeling that I hope that I will be courted by this man was already there. Amen. Uh, is Amen. it true? Amen. Nakaka, nakaka po ba? Is, can anyone relate with this with the story that we're having? So it's, it's the same thing with God. Whenever He sees His creation, He's He's so in love with the creation that He wants to do everything for His creation. And it's the same thing with the creation. The time of Adam and Eve. Whenever they see God, they are so in love with God that they, the only thing that they want to do is to always be with Him. To always be with Him. So, He plans, God plans, through Adam and Eve, to multiply the earth with the same image. Are you getting it? When you say, go and multiply and subdue all spirits in His image, what's the image of God? In His spirit. So, He wants the earth to be subdued with God-like spirit. With too many Adam in the spirit of Adam multiply through what? By the spoken word just like what yes, God did. Amen. Because they were given the authority. He has the authority over the universe. When you say another planet will come out, another planet will come out. When it says another planet, put, put another system in here. Put another planet in there. Everything will come out through his word. So when he gave the authority to Adam, it's the same authority. The earth is yours, mine is the universe, yours is the earth. So when he says the go ahead and multiply, he didn't say stop and and and, uh, and have some lust. Multiply in your form. What's their form? It's the spirit man form. So they have to multiply and subdue the earth with spirit man. Fill the earth with spirit man. That's the plan of God through the spoken word. Through the spoken word. <coughs> That's but you know that the plan of God is always complex. It's because the complexity of the plan of God 
there's a lot of the attributes in him that he wants to get out. That's why even though that you can see that that's the plan of God, also a plan of God is to go for the redemption. That's right. So you're going to find that everything is a plan of God, but uh, it's a little bit complex for the beginners in this church. Or if you're just hearing this message for the first time, it will be a little bit, uh, there's a complexity on the statements that you will be hearing. If you have some questions, we are always available to answer what queries you have after the service. <clears throat> so we just want to say that the correct union is for God, is for God to be with His creation. That's the perfect union, that's the perfect harmony, that's the perfect plan of God for fellowship. <clears throat> are you getting it? Amen. Everything was so perfect. And everything was subdued by Adam and Eve. Until one time, until the time came that Eve, <coughs> on his own, on her own, I would say, she said that I want to be alone. I don't want to live with my husband. When that thing came, that's the perfect time for the enemy to come in. When Eve was all alone in the garden, it's normally she's always with the husband. And the husband is always with her. She says that, I want to be alone. And during his, the, her time that the, he, she, she was alone, and the enemy knows that she is a weaker vessel because she is just a byproduct of man. This will be my perfect chance to come in because I know that she's weak. She started putting things in her and the first thing that happened is something happened in her mind. What was that? God says that you will die once you eat out of this tree. Everybody knows the story. There's another offer. When God says you can eat from all things, all plants that are in, inside the midst of the, inside the garden, except for one, which is the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. So when God says that because once you eat from it, you will surely die. <clears throat> so they, both of them never eat from, from any of the fruits, uh, from, from that tree, except from the fruits that God told them to eat from. Until such time that this enemy came and told, and told him, do you know that it's not true? Do you know that uh, you will not surely die? They know so from from the mind of the woman that she knows she's holding to the word of God that once I ate from the tree I will die. There's another there's a, there's an enemy who keeps on coming from my other ear saying that no you will not you will not die you will be like gods knowing good from evil and you will do this and you will do that and you can you can procreate. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So from from the from the face. From the, from the promise of God that says that you will have eternal life. What's the promise? You will have eternal life. All right. Because death is not there. Death will only come in every time that once you eat from this tree. That's right. So the promise of God is an eternal life. It's an eternal fellowship. Till death do us part. Yes, right. So the only separation between God and man will be what? Death. Death separates them. That's why the meaning of death is separation. Yes. When we say that, it's the separation between two things. <clears throat> so only death will separate us, and once you eat from that tree, you will die. So it's already a warning, and if there's a promise of God, if you're not going to eat, you will enjoy all the blessings. Right. This is my promise, whatever happens forever, eternally, you will enjoy all the blessings. Yes. But once you eat from there, you will die. They were not eating until such time that deception came in. And Eve started thinking, that's a good offer. So if that's a good offer, why, why can't I try it? So let me try it. It's, everything started from her mind. So when everything started from her mind, <clears throat> that's the first disfellowship. That's the first disfellowship. Why? It's because a disfellowship from the Word of God. When God says that you're not supposed to eat, and she started disbelieving that she's not going to die, and I can eat, that's the first fellowship. She put an unbelief in the Word of God. 
So the start of this fellowship was the unbelief in the Word of God. Every time that you're not going to believe the Word of God, it means that there's a disfellowship. So between a couple, there's a disfellowship every time that you started not trusting each other. Kapag ka hindi na nagtitiwala si babae, sa lalaki, hindi na nagtitiwala si lalaki sa babae, there's a disfellowship. Right. And that's where it started. Everything is started when there's an unbelief that is existing between the two. When the trust is broken, it's because that there's already unbelief. You don't believe on what he's saying, and the other, the other fellow doesn't believe on what she was saying. Right. <clears throat> Are you getting it? Yeah. So, this is the first thing that happened, unbelief in the Word of God. They were already in the position that they're not supposed to die, never grow old, never get sick, not to worry on anything. But they wanted to happen those things. So when that thing happened, you cannot blame anyone except yourself. That's right. That's right. In, a, in a relation, there's already a vow that you did from the very beginning. At the start of, at the start of marriage, I'm putting this message. It's not because of uh, a people. I, we're not putting the story of the people, how they met. But we're putting on the story. We're concentrating on how they will continue in their, in their bond, in their union. Right. That's why we're, we're, we're having this. That's why it's a message of oneness. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this fellowship, uh, they were already in the position that you can be happy forever. Husband and wife can always be happy. Eve and Adam can always be happy forever. God and man can always be happy forever. Right. A man and a woman can always be happy forever. As long as you will be true to your promises. As long as you will be true to your vows, it's because that once you broke your vow, and that's where the disfellowship will come in. Yes. And that's the thing that's happened with them. The only requirement is to follow the agreement. What is the agreement? It is the vow. If you follow the commandment of God and keep His words, and if they kept His words, then there is no disfellowship that will happen. Do not doubt His word. So, this fellowship. The result of this fellowship is broken families. So you will be having broken families. It's because part of the thing <coughs> that, uh, that that sin brought is, remember when God started asking for them, where are thou, Adam? I am here. I'm hiding because I'm naked. Who told you that thou were naked? Um, did you eat from the tree that I asked you not to eat from? If Adam still loves the woman at that point that he was asked, and there's no disfellowship between the two, if there's if the bond is still there, Adam would say, Yes, Lord, it's all my fault, and I love my wife. Even though that she did this. But Adam, when she was asked, she did not defend the wife. Rather, what, what he did, he did not defend the wife, but rather what he did, he said, It's the woman that you gave me. Are you getting it? Yeah. They were so in love with each other. He, she was part of Adam, but at the crunch time, when the disfellowship came in, when there's when there's the sin that came in, he started saying that there is the is the start of the break of the union. The union was broken. He, she is supposed to defend the wife from God. Did you eat from this uh, from this week? It's 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 the wife that you gave. Where's the union? The union is broken. Are you seeing it? Naputol na yung union doon pa lang nung tinanong siya. Kasi if the union is still there and it's the union is still intact, the only thing that he was saying, it's me. It's all my responsibility. It's because that I'm the head of the family and I will be the one responsible for my wife. Whatever action she does, it's on me because I'm the head of the family and I'm the husband. But he didn't do that. Nabali na yung union. The union was broken. Are you seeing? Right. Same thing with Eve. She was so in love with the groom. Wherever, wherever the groom goes, uh, she follows. Uh, whatever the groom says, she follows. Until such time that, uh, what is this that thou hast done? Ano tong ginawa mo? Instead of saying that, uh, yes, it is my fault. It's because in the first place, it's really her fault. It's her fault, it's because she decided to. It's her decision. 
that put them in sin, that put them in that position. So when she decided, when she decided, the thing that she has to do, if she still loved that husband, at that moment, I'm saying, at that moment, the thing that she will be telling that, I'm sorry, Lord, it is my fault. Don't put it on my husband. It is really mine. And uh, uh, put all the blame on me. But again, she did not say that. Why? Because the union was already broken. That's the start of breaking the union between the two. So she blamed instead the serpent. It's not me. It's the serpent that beguiled me. That's why I did all these things. Are you seeing right? Are you seeing it? So one, whenever the crunch happens, one will be blaming the other. That's why in the family, in a relation, whenever you two comes into a crunch, always stand with your wife. Always stand with your wife. Even whatever happens, even if she knows that you know that you're, she's already doing something wrong, with your parents, with others, always stand with your wife. It's because that it is you. She is a part of yeah. you. Yeah. Always stand with her. Nakukuha niyo po ba yung sinasabi natin dito? Hindi natin sila dapat ipahiya. We're not supposed to put reproach on them. Ang kahihiya nila, all the reproaches, we're not supposed to tell anyone about it. It's between you and the wife. It's between the husband and the wife. Darating ang time. I'm not saying because right now, all the sweetness are there. It's the start of your relationship. Everything will be there for you. But time will come. And it is always a part of marriage. Time will come. During the crunch, don't leave one another. Do not leave one another. It's because God is always true to His people. He's always true to His wife. And even though that thing happened, He did not leave the, the bride. God still did something for the bride. He did not left the bride at all, even though the bride went down. And it's the same thing for husband and wives. Sa mga ngayon, the game says, husband and wives, always be with your wife, always be with your husband. Time will come during the crunch again. In front of your parents, whatever happens, my wife is right. If between the two of you, you are wrong. Inside the room, between the two of you, what you did was wrong. In front of others, she was right. She is right and I'm standing with her. And it's the same thing with the wife. Whatever happens, stand with your husband. Stand with the groom. Whatever decision she has, she, he has, stand with the groom. In between the two of you, I know you're, right, I know you're wrong, but I'm standing with you. Why don't we discuss these things and settle things? But in front of everyone, don't bring the reproach to your relationship. Huwag niyong ilagay sa kahihiyan ang inyong relasyon. Hindi kahiya, hindi pinagkikwentuhan dapat ang mga relasyon na personal. Because these are personal things for you and your husband, for you and your wife. It's supposed to be personal. That's why God has set the pastors in the church. That's why God has set uh, the vehicles in the church. If you have something that you cannot bear, you can always cry to God. First thing that you have to do is to cry unto God. Secondly, is to cry unto your pastor if you cannot really bear it. Thirdly, you have a lot of friends that you can you can ask uh, some advices, but not to everyone. But not to everyone because all the relationships are personal and it's it's it's, uh, it's tailored unto each couple. Bawat isa sa atin nakatailor ang relationship natin sa atin lang. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So time will come. Hindi to, kasi once, once it went out, it magiging chismis to. Once it went out, people will be thinking badly about, about you. People will use that information against you. Which is, the, our intention is for our own good, but people who hears, not everyone has the seed of God in us. That's right. If the seed of God is in us, and you know that you are a bride of Christ, it will be a good. Uh, it's, it will be. It will be a good for us. It's because the only thing that you're going to do is to pray for our brethren. But if it's not, people are going to use this against you. So, relationships, whatever you have, kahit na ano ang pinagtatakanan yung dalawa, keep it between the two of you. Keep it between you and your and, and God. If you cannot bear it, keep it with, between you and the pastor. 
That's why there's a pastor in the church to help you pray for it. Ang mga pastor, tumatawag din ng assistance yan. Kaya tumatawag din ng iba yan. Andiyan ang mga ninong, andiyan ang mga ninang. They are your second, your, the principal sponsors will be your second parents. If the parents are not available, you have your sponsors to ask advices every time that you're in trouble. If the relationship is rocky, it's always, you're, first thing that you have to do, go back to the Word of God. That's right. Because the Word of God is the foundation of everything. If everything is set on the foundation of the Word of God, everything is founded on God. Everything, even if it's rocky, will still be stable again. It's because that once it's founded in the Word of God, everything will be good. At the end, everything will be good. So that's the thing that happened. Broken relations started up. Broken relation, <clears throat> broken union, set by the devil, who's going to suffer? It's the family. Once a, once a relationship is uh, broken down, once a family is broken down, who's going to suffer? The children. So everybody will be suffering. It's not just one. Akakala natin, sometimes we become selfish to ourselves that uh, hindi tayo magkasunto, okay, let's split up together. Well, let's split up. Once you split up, it's the children who suffers because of the things that we're doing and we're deciding. Whenever you separate it, it's always the kids. Look after the kids. Check what the kids is ha what's happening with the kids. How are you going to, 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 to let them grow in the fear of God if they can see that there's something wrong in your relationship? This, are, are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. That's the cause of unfaithfulness. That's the cause of unbelief in each other. Kapag ka hindi na kayo nagtitiwala, if you lost trust, if you lost your loyalty, if you lost your love, this will be the product of all those things. And we don't want that to happen. And that's the thing that happened from the Garden of Eden. What happened after that? <clears throat> Eve started unbelieving the Word of God. If he started unbelieving the Word of God, that's already God. Do you think he's going to still, do you think he's still believing the Word of Adam? Which is lesser than God? Are you getting it? Yes. Kung yung God na nga, ito na nga yung Diyos, this is the level of God. And she started disbelieving the Word of God. And this is Adam at her level. Do you think she still believes the Word of Adam? Kung yung Diyos ka eh, hindi na pinapaniwalaan eh. It's the same thing with the husband. She no longer believed that word of, uh, of, of Adam during that time. Are you getting it? Yeah. Must lower si Adam. And that's the thing that happened with woman. When, when sin came in, when she was injected with all the things in her mind, matalino ka. You're good. May kakayanan ka. You have the power. You can do things on your own without the wife or without the husband. You can do it alone. What happened with the woman? She was puffed up. Naging high-minded na siya. Naging proud na siya. Proud set in, high-minded set in, boastful, naging mayabang na siya. Who was, who was that? It was the woman. It was Eve during that time. Ah, may kakayanan na pala ako. Kaya mo pang gawin to. You can still do that. Ah, may kakayanan pa ako. Kaya mong magtrabaho nang wala siya. Kaya mong pakainin ang pamilya mo nang wala siya. Hindi mo kailangan ng asawa. Until such time, the family was broken because of these things that was injected in the, one, in the mind of the woman. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what happened with him. And that's what happened with the church today. The church today, they thought after everybody heard the message, they thought that we can do whatever we want is because that now we're powerful with all the message that we have. So we can just teach whatever, even if it's a strange doctrine, we can just do whatever we want. People in the Philippines started teaching, there are two souls. Well, originally God says that there's only one soul that will be redeemed. Amen. There's no replacement otherwise, I won't be redeeming anything. That's right. There's only one soul that needs to be redeemed. There are no two souls at all. Another teaching, there are two gods. From one God became two. There are no two gods. There's only one God and his family. And he wants to put himself in his family. There's only one God who had created everything. And until now, it's the same God who works in us. Another teaching.
teaching came up, there are two. You can marry two. You cannot marry two. Right. You, can, you can have two wives. It's wrong and it's a false teaching and it's a teaching of the devil. Yes. Right. You can never marry two. Otherwise, you will be wrong totally with the scripture. Yeah. Even the scripture tells us that for, for a minister of the church, you must be having a, one, a husband of one wife. To be a deacon of the church, you must be a husband of one wife. So how can be the husband of one wife teach that they can marry two when the requirement for them is just to marry one? That's right. Yes, that's right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. How can you do multiple, multiple wives if the teaching for the pastors, for the elders of the church, for the deacons of the church, is to just have one wife? Yes. Do you think the pastor will teach that? It's because that he won't be able to enjoy having two wives. Why, why do I have to teach something that I won't be able to enjoy? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It's false. And that's what happened with the church right now. They become puffed. With all the knowledge, with all the knowledge of the message, with all the revelation that was revealed word in our time. I'm not talking about the denomination. We're gone, we gone long back from the denomination. I'm talking about the church today. The people who claim that we are an anti church. We became too puffed up that we forget going back to the original word. While the original teaching to us is you have to go back to the word. You have to go back to the Lord. If you think that you're already out of the scripture, it's because there are too many things. This, this, this message church, revelation in this message church is too many. That you will be imagining things, that you will be creative on things sometimes. Because of that creation, sometimes you're already getting out of the word of God. But the devil was saying, you can do that, you can create. You can be good, you will be better than God's. And that's what happened today. It's the same thing that happened with you. And that's the same thing that happened with the woman of today. It's the same thing that was injected in their minds. You can do whatever you want without the consultation of your husband. Without the agreement of your husband. I'm a woman, I'm a working woman. I can I, I generate my own money, I generate my own income. I can live without you. Is that the spirit of Eve that I'm seeing? Is that the spirit of Eve that I'm seeing? That's the spirit of Eve who, when she went out from God. When she went out from the word of God. And that's the spirit of Eve. But the original advice from us, you have to be one. You have to agree in one. You have to consult each other. You have to love each other. You have to put all your trust in each other. You have to be loyal to one another. Okay. That's the instructions of God from us. <clears throat> to us. So it's a breaking. That's, that's what these things are, are doing. Breaking the relationship. Reason is because of the change of mind. The change of mind that happened in the church. The change of mind that happened with the woman of today. The change of mind that happened with Eve. It is all started in the mind. And that's what the devil is using. Until today. God, however says that everything will be good is because that there would be a restoration that will happen. So what God did, what Adam did, when he saw that something happened in him, there was an implant that happened. There was a seed that was implanted on the womb of him. So for him not to die, I still love him. I still love her. But for her not to die and suffer death, I will try at the same time to put my seed in her. Ilalagay ko rin yung seed ko sa kanya para hindi siya patayin ng Diyos. That's what his thinking was. So when there's a seed of the, of the serpent that was implanted in her, Adam was on the other hand was also thinking, if that thing happened, once I put my seed in her, maybe there's a possibility that God is not going to kill her. Or death will not set it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yes. So what she, what he did is to implant the seed. Inilagay niya yung kanyang, yung inilagay niya yung kanyang tumla. Kay Adam, uh, Adam did put it in Eve. Remember Eve, woman, uh, they're just incubators, remember that. They are not producers of life. All the life producing, uh, uh, all the, all the life comes from the man. 
is that the egg cell of the woman is just a cycle, a monthly cycle. Whether you want it or not, you have no control on that. The, are, are you getting what I'm saying? The egg cell, the period of the woman, it is a monthly period that it will, you, the woman has no control on that cycle. While on the other side of the man, for that egg to become, to become fer, uh, fertile, or for, to become uh, fertilized, I would say, the thing that has to happen is uh, to meet both the sperm and, and egg together. But the sperm has the full control of the man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. The man has the full control of life, while the egg of the woman is just a cycle that she has no control. So, kapag ka natapos yung cycle, nothing happens. She's just going to, to drop it out. So, the period will start up again. There would be a fertile period in the woman. And then, if nothing happens, it will drop out again. And nothing will happen. It's just going to move out. Whatever happens, it's a monthly cycle for the woman. But the male has the control of life. Yes. It is the male that controls the life. Kaya ang, ang buhay nanggagaling po sa mga kalalakihan. That's why life came from God. The life in the church came from God. And church is just a womb. So, <clears throat> same thing that happened with Adam and Eve. Eve is just uh, a, a womb with an egg. So, when, he, when Adam found that there is something that uh, would make Eve die, he said that uh, there is a possibility that if I do this, I might be able to save her. Kaya inilagay niya ito niya, tunlaan niya doon sa loob, tinuntaan niya. That's why uh, there became two seeds in the womb of Eve. Of Eve. That's the serpent seed and Adam seed. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. So, that's why in the scripture, you will be finding that there's an instruction of, uh, to us, uh, I believe it's in uh, 1 Timothy. In 1 Timothy 2, from 13 to 15, First Timothy 2 from 13 to 15. It says in for Adam was first formed than Eve. Adam was first formed than Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. It is the woman who was in transgression. Now with its notwithstanding, she shall be saved. Who was that? The woman shall be saved by childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. So it is by childbearing. During the time of Adam and in the Old Testament days, everybody wants, all oh, the woman wants to have a child. It's because that, that's their salvation. For them to be saved, they have to be, they, they should bear some child. That's why if their womb, if they, they don't have any child at all, at all, they were saying that they were already cursed. Are you getting it? That was in the Old Testament days. So, <clears throat> woman will become, will be saved by childbearing. That's why we, it is a must that we should be implanted or pregnated by the seed. Woman, as a woman, as a church this time, the woman for this church to be saved, we have to be pregnated by the man and by the man. And our man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And our man is God. And our man is the Lord. So the church of today must be pregnated by the word of God. Amen. The church of today must be pregnated by the word. That's the church. That's why we, at the very end time, this church, which is of the right age, was pregnated by the word. By the living word of God. However, individually, you must also be pregnated by the word. Amen. Individually, we must be pregnated and you have to born this word. Kailangan natin mailabas itong salita na ito. It's not just uh, getting pregnant, uh, pregnant with the word, but you have to born the word as well. Being a woman, being the bride of our time. And uh, uh, so it's the same thing. Whenever you see what they did is to Adam went back to the woman again to start making the union. Close the union again. So he tried to close the union by doing it on his way. And it's the same thing. Whenever there's an issue between husband and wife, for you to resolve it, just go back to your vows. <coughs> just go back to your vows. <coughs> Even though you're married for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, if there's an issue between a relationship, you just have to go back from the very start of your relationship and what happened with your vow. It's because that once you go back to that vow, everything will be restored back. 
And that's the thing that Adam looked at. There's a vow that I left with God that I will be with the wife. I will be with my wife. Remember at Genesis 2, you, you one and wife has to go together and leave their parents. Yes. So they have to go together. There's a vow that the, he she has to go with the woman at whatever cost. Right. Kaya ng vow. So whenever when something happens, just go back to your vows. Namumulubema kayo sa pamilya, namumulubema kayo sa broken relationship. Go back to your vows. However, a vow will be a vow if God will be in your midst. That's why marriage, right now, this is not the marriage that is happening. The marriage is started when you started giving your vow to each other in good faith. That's what the message told us. A vow will be honored by God. You will be married by God. You're already tied with God even before you come into this church. Yes. Right. Even before you went to, 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 to the Philippine Embassy to get your legal legal documents. Yes. It's because God is honoring the vow in good faith. Amen. As long as it's in good faith, you both believe in God, you both believe in the message, you both believe in His Word, and you said to each other, and you gave your promises to, to each other, that's already, you already tied with God. Amen. The waiting has already been done. So this is just a ceremony that we're doing on earth, but the wedding was already done. It's because, the, it's because of the vow. So this vow is too important that once you go back to your vows, all the all, all it can mend any broken relationship. Amen. But the requirement is both of you has to be founded in the word of God. Has to be with God. Kasi kapag ka, meron tayong mga relationships na nandito sa loob, na yung isa hindi mananampalataya, yung isa mananampalataya, it will be too hard. That's right. But you have to trust in God if you still have some vow with Him. If you have a vow with Him, God will always be true to His word. That when He says that you and your family will be saved, He's going to grant that vow. Because it's already a vow that He gave to us. That's a vow that we, God has given you. That's the vow that you receive from God. That even though your family are still unbelievers and your family are still with the world, believe into that vow. Tell, tell the Lord that, Lord, I'm holding to this vow that you told me that there will be a salvation for family, for my family, and it will be good, and God will, God will be true to His word. Hallelujah. So whenever things happen and become rocky, to maintain the union, to save her from death, the only thing that you have to do is to go back to your vows. What happened in your vow with the Lord? What happened to your vow to each other when you first met each other? What happened with the vow of this church to God? But what happened with your individual vows to the Lord? Everyone has their own relationship with God. If you think that it is rocky right now, you can always make your vow right now together with the vows that our brethren is doing. Yeah. You can be wed to the Lord right now. Right. Right. So with all these things, that is the oneness of God. He's trying to restore everything back to Him. So He sent His Son. He sent His Son. He became the Holy Ghost in us. He says that I will be in you and you will be in me as I was in the Lord Jesus, as I was in my Father. So it's the Holy Ghost, I in this word. And once we go to his word, he will be coming back to us and will be protecting us. It's a, uh, uh, it's a, a, a dual indwelling, I would say. That you dwell in the Lord and we, the Lord dwells in us. So it's a dual indwelling. So are you getting it? God in his family. God in His right to restore things back to the original, that's His perfect plan. And even in our studies, He was saying that uh, one of my reasons is to restore everything back to the original when I can be with my family. Amen. And that's the restoration. So God, God says, who can separate me from the love of God? Who can separate us from the love of God? No one. But let's, let's read that. It's, uh, it's in Romans 8. <coughs> It's in Romans 8. Romans 8, uh, on 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Will this be the reason for the separation between us and God? No, it's not a tribulation. <clears throat> or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? 
As it is written, for thy sake we are all killed all the day long. We are accounted as sh sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of cry of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord Amen. so no one can separate us from the love of God for you, Sister Laika, Brother Elmer, no one can separate you from your love against each That's other right. except what the Lord says, that their separation is just by death. Yes. So if there will be a death, that's why we put the vow that kill that do us part, is because that's the only thing that can separate a husband and a wife. So that would be our message uh, for this morning as we proceed to the ceremony. Does uh, anyone want to offer a song? <coughs> Brother Joe. Tomorrow morning when you wake up and the sun does not Darkness inside of love, hold my hand and have no fear. Cause I, I will be here. And I will be here when you feel like being quiet. When you need to speak your mind, I will listen. And I will be here when the laughter turns to crying Through the wind losing or trying We'll be together Cause I will be here yeah. and Tomorrow morning when you wake up And the future Sure seasons are made for change, our lifetimes are made for years. So I, I will be here, and I will be here. You can cry on my shoulder when the mirror tells us we're older. I will hold you. I will be here to watch you grow in beauty and tell you all the things you are to me. I will be here and I will be true to the promise I have made to you and to the one who gave Times are made for years. Cause I, I will be here and we'll be together forever. Cause I will be here.
this church, families, friends of the bride and the bridegroom, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you as we have been invited here today to witness and celebrate the uniting in marriage of Brother Elmer Ibanez and Sister Laika Ormalejo on the holy matrimony which was founded and established by God himself as it follows the pattern of the mystery of the oneness of Christ and his church. This ceremony will be made majestic by his holy presence having the Holy Ghost as our true and faithful witness on this occasion. Remember that Christ did his first miracle in a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Yeah. So when he made his first miracle, there's something that he wants to imply in a wedding. So he was telling us that in every wedding, there will be a miracle that will happen. <coughs> so it's not, just, it's not just a story. So when he made it in a wedding, he was telling us, there's a miracle. I'm going to make some miracles inside the marriage. It's not just a normal marriage. So in every marriage, you must be inviting God in your midst for that miracle to happen. Because if God is not in any marriage or it's not founded in the marriage, those miracles will never be there. So what was that miracle? It is the turning of the water into wine. It is the turning of the water into wine. First miracle of God. What was that? In a marriage. What was that? It's a wedding supper. It's a marriage. It's a, it's a turning of the water into wine. And the message has told us that the water is always the water of the Word of God. Amen. So when it is the water of the Word of God, the Word of God, when it, became, when it came to us, the conversion of the water into wine is that Word of God became a revealed Word unto Amen. us. And when it became a revealed Word unto us, the message told us that the wine means it's the stimulation of the revelation. So whenever there's a stimulation of revelation, you long for more. You long for more word. You, more, you long for more revealed word. So it's always there. The word, once it's converted, it becomes a revealed word and it will become a stimulation of the revelation and you keep asking for more. And that is the that is the mystery, and that is that is the that is the uh, miracle that happened in that wedding. And the word <clears throat> would be the word and the vows of the people that will be uh, that are here at the moment, Brother Elmer and Sister Laika. These vows will always be with you, but it will not happen to your lives not unless you'll be having the inspiration. So that inspiration needs to be there. But it will not happen without the miracle of God. That's right. Because the vows will only remain as a vow between the two of you. Without the inspiration of God to drive you to hold on to that vows, it will never, nothing will happen to your relationship. The vow will remain in this church only. The vows will be remaining with all the witnesses only. But once you put God in the midst, and right now He is invited and He is with us, He's going to make that vows and make it a miracle and make something in, in, make something in you and convert your vows into an inspiration that will last your relationship. Amen. And that's the thing that happened. He gave those, he, he attended that wedding so that that miracle will happen. So this miracle is happening right now. So we're inviting the Lord Jesus Christ as our witness. <clears throat> he wants us to magnify this ceremony by His Holy Word, that is His Word and that is God, and ensure that decisions are not coerced. It is not forced. Is it true that the decisions that you did are not forced? I just want to hear that. And uh, thoughtfully made decisions during the wedding, you know, when you said that you want to, uh, you know, that you have decided, these decisions that you do are thoughtfully made. It's not just an overnight and it's not coerced. Walang baril. So, hindi na So, that's the thing that we want to say. 
that you did it willfully at your own, so it's not coerced, and thoughtfully made it with full respect to each other. With full respect to each other. And most importantly, sought the perfect will of the Lord Jesus Christ in fear and humility. Okay. Now may I ask uh, the parents and representation of the parents. We know that uh, uh, there was a struggle on the side of Brother Elmer when he was not able to ask the blessing of the parents at the very last phase of this before we, we went to this uh, ceremony. So they were uh, legally uh, tied yesterday, or that was that on Wednesday? On Wednesday, that before Wednesday, Tuesday, they attended the service in here, and after the service, we prayed to the Lord that uh, the mother of uh, Sister Laika, uh, at first, she, she doesn't want to, to, there's a restriction or, or uh, an objection from her side to go on and carry this marriage on until uh, we spoke with her together with the sister of uh, Sister Laika and uh, at around the 12 midnight our time in the Philippines we woke her up just to ask for the blessing and with the grace of the Lord we got it from her. Amen. Before we go on before the marriage. Uh, so that is, that is another, another uh, thanksgiving that we have to that uh, our couple right now is uh, giving thanks to the Lord is because that it is too hard for us to get married without the consent or the blessing. It's not about the consent, but it's about the blessing of the parents. So we were, they were able to do it successfully. So now may I ask uh, the parents or the representation of the parents of Brother Elmer and Sister Laika to please rise up. Uh, this wedding is also, is just uh, the, the parents, uh, the representation of the parents. This wedding is also a celebration of family. It is the blending of two families <clears throat> that have been separate up to this moment. They don't know each other. No one knows that they will be going together. So those families never know each other at all. So marriage also is not about the couple, but it's also about the binding of the families of the couple. It's not just them. They're not just being the one who's getting a union. Even the families are being united. So, blending their knowledge in different ways of living, blending their cultures if they are two different nationalities, blending everything between them, knowing each other, until they became a huge family tree. So, the family tree now is starting to come up, to come in. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, it's not just about the couple. Every time that there's a marriage, it's not just a blending of the couple, but it's also the blending of the whole, it's a whole union of family that goes in together. So it is important to have the blessing of the parents every time the marriage will come in. So to uh, the parents or representation of the parents of Brother Elmer, Sister Jenny, Jennifer, as you represent Brother Elmer's parents and family, do you offer this couple your goodwill? Thank you. Do you welcome Sister Laika for Malejo as a member of your family and will give her your love and affection? Thank you, Sister. Uh, to Sister Laika's parents and the representation of Sister Laika is her sister, Sister Laurelie. <clears throat> sister Laurelie, as you present Sister Laika's, uh, represent Sister Laika's parent and family, do you offer this couple your goodwill? Do you welcome Brother Elmer as a member of your family and will give him your love and affection? Thank you, both parents, and uh, you may both be seated. <coughs> may I invite uh, the couple to rise up, please? Now, do you, Brother Elmer Ibanez, Do you, Brother Elmer Ibanez, 
Thank you, Sister Laika for Malejo in the presence of God and our family and friends as witnesses to be your wife, your partner in life, and your one true love. Thank you. Do you now make a lifetime commitment to be a considerate, tender, faithful, loving husband to encourage, comfort, and cherish her in times of prosperity as well in times of trouble? Thank you. And do you pledge to establish a loving home for your family, to make her and your children the priority of your life, and to nurture your special relationship always? Thank you. Thank you. Could you pass the mic to Sister Laika, please? Do you, Sister Laika Pormalejo, take you, Brother Elmer Ibanez, in the presence of God and our family and friends as witnesses to be your husband, your partner in life, and your one true love? Do you now make a lifetime commitment to be a considerate, tender, faithful, loving wife to encourage, comfort, and cherish him in times of prosperity as well as in times of trouble? And do you pledge to establish a loving home for your own family, to make him and your children the priority in your life, and to nurture your special relationship always? Thank you, and uh, you may now both be seated. As uh, I believe there's a special offering for the for the for the bride from the groom. May I now invite the groom to give a special offer to the wife, to the to the bride. Trust you are 
that was a wonderful song, and uh, I can see the joy in the eyes of the bride while uh, Brother Elmer is seeing, was singing. So that's uh, this, uh, what wedding is all about. And now we release all things, all the couples out there. Lahat ng mga may asawa at nag-asawa at mag-aasawa pa lang. You remember all the days when you were when you were tied together. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> so may I invite uh, both uh, the, uh, the couple again, uh, both uh, the, the groom and the bride to stand up. <coughs> uh, Brother Elmer and Sister Laika, as you stand here in the presence of God and these witnesses, I remind you that love, loyalty, and trust are the basis of a mature and fulfilling relationship. Marriage is a serious undertaking. It is intended to bind your lives together forever and is not to be taken lightly. Your engagement set into motion the interweaving of your lives, and we hope that you will continue to grow closer throughout the years together. None of us knows what the future will bring. As you exchange the vows which will start you on your journey together, know that our love and support go with you. As you make your promises to each other, we will also, all of us will remember the promises we too have made and take this opportunity to make new our own. May I request uh, the bridesmaid and uh, this man. <clears throat> While you face this other, can you assist uh, the, the bouquet, please? While you face each other, hold hands together, look at each other's eyes. May I now request Brother Elmer, as you look into Sister Laika's eyes and hold her hands, please state your vows, either in Tagalog or in English, in where, where you're comfortable with, and you may, you may proceed now. Now that uh, we have the rings with us, these rings represent the vows.
and the, promise, the promises you have willingly made and exchanged. They reflect the commitment, those words that inspire and all your hopes and dreams for the future. May they remind you that the marriage is not destination, it's not a destination, it's always a journey. When you say it's a journey, it's continuously going on. So it's not a destination, it will never end because it's a journey. They reflect, <coughs> uh, there will be no beginning and no end, just a moment to moment opportunity to love and be loved to the best of your ability. May these rings remind you that your love, like the sun, warms all that it touches. It's like the moon that brightens up the night, or the darkness, if ever that will happen in your life. And it's like the eye that is the gateway to your innermost soul. So are you, as you exchange your wings, you just uh, repeat after me while you're putting the ring of sister like as hands. On the left hand, the ring finger. Brother Elmer, as you place the ring on Sister Laika's finger, please repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I, marry you I marry you and bind my life to yours. And bind my life to yours. It is a symbol of my eternal love. It is a symbol of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all my tomorrows. And the promise of all my tomorrows. I pledge to share with you. I pledge to share with you. My heart and my soul. My heart and my soul. Till death to us part. Till death to us part. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may put the ring in. Hallelujah. Sister Laika. As you place the ring on brother's, uh, Brother Elmer's finger uh, while looking at his eyes, please repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I, marry you, I marry you and bind my life to yours. It is a symbol of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all my tomorrows. And the promise for all my tomorrows. I pledge to share with you. I pledge to share with you. My heart and my soul. My heart and my soul. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May I request the couple to kneel down, please? I may ask the best man and the bridesmaid to join us and to lay a veil over you to clothe you together and the cord to bind you together. Veil, you have to put it on top of the head of uh, the woman, the bride, and that would be on the shoulders of the groom.
house that will be a home, and with faith we'll build it strong. We'll build a house for the faith that together we can make. And when the strong winds blow, it won't fall down. As established by the word of God. As 
established by the word of God. I do promise. I do promise that I will support and serve you. That I will support and serve you with every strength. With every strength that flows in me as I live. That flows in me as I live. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In First Corinthians. In First Corinthians 11, please. Maybe just uh, read the scripture. But I would have you now that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. And that's why you have the veil over you, and his head is unveiled, because after this marriage, there will only be one head in the family, and that is the husband. And that would be the father of the family, which is the head of everything. And you will be under subjection, that's why that represents the veil in you. So at all cost, you will be under subjection to Brother Elmer's sister Lyca. Okay. And in the scripture of Matthew 18 and 18, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And right now, with that cord, we are binding you on earth. And that whenever you bind on earth, you're already bound in heaven. But as we said, that it is the vow that was the most important thing that happened, that even this ceremony happened, your vows in good faith in the Lord Jesus Christ has already bound you in the Lord. And that's uh, that already served you your bind in heaven. <clears throat> in Mark 10, Seven, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore hath God joined together, let not man put asunder. So if you're already joined by God, whatever happens, no one can break this marriage. It's in good faith, and not any man, wala po sa bawat isa sa atin, will be the one that will cause the breakage of your marriage. <clears throat> Hallelujah. For both of you, can you bring the mic again? Please repeat after me. This unity. This unity has been recognized to be established not just on earth but even in the heavens and this will last eternally so may I invite uh, all the brethren of the church to come forward so that uh, we can pray for the uh, for the couple Just uh, the, I'm, I'm inviting the elders of the church only to come forward. The elders of the church, please come forward. You may still be remain seated. I invite all the deacons and all the trustees of the church. Let's lay our hands on the, 
เราจะขอบพระองค์ฮาเลลูยาฟาเดอร์โอลไมท์ทีขอบคุณของคุณในวันนี้ครับพระองค์เราทำการประชุมนี้คุณเป็นผู้ประกอบการและพระเจ้าเป็นผู้ประกอบการในวันนี้ในการแสดงพระเจ้าของเราระหว่างเราและพระเจ้าเอลเมอร์อิบานีสและพี่สาวไลค์ของเราพระเจ้าเราขอบคุณของคุณในวันนี้ในการประชุมนี้คุณเป็นผู้ประกอบการในวันนี้ในการแสดงพระเจ้าของเราระหว่างเราและพระเจ้าเราขอบคุณของคุณ To this couple, O oh Father, Lord, let your blessings, O oh Father, and your word be founded in their love, and be established in this marriage that we they are starting, in their relationship as they grow in love, O oh Father, as they grow in their marriage relation. Guide them, O oh Lord, in every step. Guide them, O oh Father, in every way that they're going to decide, in all the decisions that they're going to do. Make you the center of their lives, O oh Lord. Let all decisions be sought from you before they decide on things. Let them respect each other, O oh Lord. Let them honor each other, O oh Father. Let them love each other, O oh Father. Let the loyalty between them remain. Let the trust in them, O oh Father, be established. Hinihingi po namin pagnoon ng lahat ng bagay na ito. Being founded in the fount of your love, O oh Lord. Kaya niyo po, Panginoon, umako, O Panginoon, ng inyong pag-ibig. Na nanggagaling, Panginoon, sa inyong fountain, sa inyong bukal, Panginoon. At patuloy, Panginoon, na magpunta sa bukal nila. Kaya niyo po, Panginoon, ang bawat isa ay magkaroon ng bukas na kaisipan sa lahat ng nangyayari, Panginoon. Let them understand each other, O oh Father, as they grow in their relation. Relationship as is a continuous adjustment. Relationship, O oh Father, ay patuloy po, Panginoon, na mag adjust ang bawat isa abang nagbabago, Panginoon, ang faces ng kanilang buhay. But, Father, pagka dumating, Panginoon, in times of their trouble, let them go back, Father, to their house that they're doing right now, that they just did, O oh Father. Kahit na ano, Panginoon, ang problema, whatever storm happened, O oh Father, kahit ano, Lord, ang unos na daanin nila. Kapag dumaan sila, Panginoon, hayahin niyo po, Panginoon, ibalik sila sa lahat ng pangako na ginawa nila sa umaga nito. Maalala nila na sila ay nagmamahalan. Maalala nila, Panginoon, na sila ay, Lord, na buo, Panginoon, ang kanilang pag-iibigan sa pahumagitan ninyo na ang lahat ng bagay ay isinet niyo sa kanila. Pag dumating, Panginoon, ang madidilim na araw sa kanila, O oh, Father, wala po silang masasandalan kundi ang bawat isa. Huwag po, Panginoon, dumating sa kanila na sila ay mahiya sa isa't isa. Huwag niyo po, Panginoon, sila dala ng kahihiyan. Ayahin niyo po, Panginoon, ang bawat kahihiyan ay iber nilang dalawa. Ipagtanggol nila ang bawat isa. Hindi sila magdiinan sa bawat isa. Hindi sila magsisihan na nangyari, Panginoon, sa Garden of Eden. Bagkus, Panginoon, sa inyong pag-ibig, ang lahat ay laging nabubuo. Ang isang pamilya, Panginoon, ay pwedeng mabuo kahit, Panginoon, ano ang mangyari sa inyong dakilang pag-ibig sa mga ng inyong salita. And this morning, O oh Father, lahat po kami ay nananalangin, lahat po kami ay nag-aalay, nananalangin para, Panginoon, sa mga sa mag-asawa na ito, O oh Father, na Panginoon, at kayo ang sumama sa kanilang buhay, Panginoon, magmula sa simula hanggang sa inyong pagbabalik. Nagpapasalamat po, Panginoon, kami sa umagang ito as we offer, Panginoon, both of them into your precious hands. We ask all these things in your most precious name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Well, may maybe start to, to offer another song again. As uh, the pores and the veils are being removed, let the bride, bridesmaid and the best man
please come. I would uh, be calling the couples first. Uh, let me call on Sister Jordan, Brother Chris, and Sister Jonah Bobias. Please stand here on this side of the. Uh, So let's start with Brother Chris. We will be giving you two minutes each. Let's stay with the time. Sa mga sponsors po, let's respect the time para hindi po tayo tumagal. We will be giving everyone two minutes each. One to two minutes, it's up to you. At maximum by two minutes. Based on your very experience, please give the advice to our to the couple. First of all, we would like to congratulate Brother Elmer and Sister Laika and God bless to your married life. And I always compare uh, married life just like, a, just like a soldier. Because, you know why? You will go to fight. It's <laughs> like you will go to the, to the battle. After the battle, there is a peace. <laughs> After the peace, there is a love, which is the most important thing yes. in yes. very life. Based on the 
experience. <laughs> Advice is based on experience.
bagong yung ilabas yung uh, sa loob niyo sa iba, mag-usap muna kang gano'n. Yeah, yeah. Dapat yeah. maging open kayo. Yeah, yeah. Kasi basta naglihiman kayo sa bawat kaysa, doon mali-start yung, uh, ano, yung mga uh, hindi magkakaunawaan, yung pag-aaway. That's true. Uh, mahirap yung sa, sa iba pa nila nalaman na meron ka palang sinasabi. O meron kang ginagawa, malaman pa, ng, uh, malaman pa nila sa iyo. Sa iba. That's true. Uh, yeah. Kaya maging uh, open kayo. Uh, right. Yun yung... Uh, yun lang po yung mga uh, atas ko. Amen. May I now invite Brother Al Alvin?
Margaret at her Eduardo Pavilion. Again, uh, on behalf of my family, it's a great privilege to extend my congratulations because I have not been privileged to witness this. As the proceedings was going on, I was always looking at Hallelujah. My life was uh, Now I'm asked to advise, to give advice. I, I'm the one supposed to be advised. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the things that is happening to me. But anyhow, God is always great for all of us. We are all gathered here in this event to witness the significant events to the lives of our brethren, brother Elmer and sister Laika. It's a rare privilege for us to witness this. And each and every one of us will be cherishing this event in the eye of the Lord and how we have also been part of their lives. As for me, I'm standing here right now. I'm looking also at my own family and looking at you on what experience I have. There is a two prong here, the physical and the spiritual. In the physical life, you have your own dreams to be the whole family. Raise your, family, your children the way that you want them to. But on the spiritual side, I can advise because I met my wife. We were not yet believers. So there are two things that happened in our lives when we were not yet believers. And we were already believers. So it is always now I can advise that all these, all your thoughts, before you speak, before you do things, always seek God's preeminence always. Yeah. And this is the only way that we can escape the corruptions that is coming into our lives. Let God be the glory yeah. to all of us. Congratulations. Thank you, Brother Paul. May I invite our Brother Money? Emmanuel Pamintula. <laughs> Brother Wilmer, Sister Leica, congratulations. Tagalogi ko na lang. Palagi kayong magtuluhan sa lahat ng bagay. Halimbawa ay uh, magbubuhat kayo ng uh, 10 kilos or 20 kilos. Pag isa lang nagbubuhat, magbigat yun. Pero kung dalawa kayo, napakagaan ko nun. Kaya gawin yung set up sa inyong pagsasama ng Panginoon. Pagkilala nyo sa mga magiging anak nyo ang unang-una ang Panginoon. Pagkaroon kayo ng mabuting pamilya. Brother Elmer, Tulungan mo si Sister Laika pagkakit sa mga gawain ng bahay. <laughs> Sister Laika, si Brother Elmer, pag nagplatsa, huwag mong papaglabay. Magpapas na yan. Ganyan <laughs> lang po, at congratulations po ulit. God bless you. Hey, I forgot about Brother Nestor. <laughs> Brother and uh, Brother Nelson, may invite Brother Nelson. Nagtatago ka dyan, next time we're going to be in the So, Brother Nelson, get up at it. One of our deacons. Amen. Not a law. 
So we can say there's a lot. I mean, it's not a 50-50, it's a 100%. So it's a love. So as we heard this morning, without the love, so maybe now you are happy, and then later on you can uh, see all the things, what is the uh, differences in this other. But uh, you must understand and respect and honor each other. So that's the... Uh, marriage uh, life yeah? and then another thing you must be uh, quick in forgiveness yeah? so sometimes there's a differences it's, uh, sometimes the uh, one uh, as I experience if my wife is talking I just keep quiet <laughs> <laughs> so let me call this other so uh, Maybe it's like we become happy with this one. So remember, it's a lot. Then you will uh, start to learn each other. What is your uh, attitude, character? And then maybe next day when you wake up, uh, this is my husband. When she wake up, uh, the looks, uh, she's different. <laughs> and then my wife, when she's sleeping in the night, she's snuggling. <laughs> so that's the part. So it's not a fifty-fifty. It's a hundred percent relationship. So remember, it's not an overnight relationship. Marriage is a uh, till death was part. I mean, as God said that she, we are the bride. I mean, as brother uh, Edward, his ceremony is a manifestation that you uh, selected uh, Sister Laika, so as God selected us as a bride, amen. So the perfect love, always the foundation must be our God. Yeah. That's all, that's my uh, advice. Thank you, uh, May I now call Brother Nestor. Remember that uh, advice is based on experience are not only advices on good things that are happening. That's right. Uh, Even if our relationships or relationship is rocky, we can learn something from that. Exactly. So may I present to you brother next time. Praise God. First of all, I would like to be very thanks for the message of today. Because personally it is for me. It's very clear that uh, when you go in this kind of a relationship, like uh, having, accepting a woman that you don't know really in your life, you will, you will just know him as you go along together. You will realize that, uh, as Brother Mezu said, you will find out that when he has his sleep, every, uh, in the night, you will hear him smoking. Pero ang isang maganda dyan, yung bagay na maririnig ko sa akin, kasi ang alam ko, ang ini-expect niyo sa akin, yung mga bagay na masama na nangyari sa buhay ko. Kapupulutan natin ang araw ng bawat isa na nangyari sa buhay ng bawat isa. Sa so, umpisa, kapag ka tayo ay nagmahal, ang nakikita natin ay puro gaganda lang. Wala tayong iniisip na masama. Pero as we, as we go on traveling with our lives with that, with that kind of relation, we will experience really the downest part. <clears throat> and that's what happened to me. As the preaching today, it, it makes clear into my into my heart that really you should you should not be dealing your problem to everybody. Because it is a personal. And uh, Brother Elmer, Sister Laika, uh, sa edad nyo yan, uh, Pag dumating kayo sa edad ko ng 56, sa kanyo sabihin na tagumpay kami sa buhay. Pero isa lang sasabihin ko sa inyo na mangyayari sa inyo dahil kayo ay may takot sa salita ng Diyos as we speak as the preaching water it was in. Kapag ka ang nasa sintro ng buhay ninyo ay ang Diyos at ang salita ng Diyos, there will be a problem. It will not be prevented perfectly, 100%. There will be a problem but it will be lesser, lesser because you have uh, you have uh, may tako kayo sa salita ng Diyos mayroon kayong respeto sa bawat isa hindi ko sinasabi na huwag nasaba ko yung respeto sa akin pero dumating sa punto na na ang mga bagay na nangyayari talaga sa buhay ng isang tao hindi, naman, hindi natin hawak ang ating future kasi 
Mag-beer for as long na meron tayo sa likan ng Diyos. At mga hawakan tayo sa likan ng Diyos. Kahit ano mangyari, whatever happens, it can be to pass back. Kung matandaan niyo sa tayo, tayo ka, matatimik. At ang nasasabi ko, bilang personal experience ko sa bilang may asawa, kahit na ano mangyari, huwag mong iiwanan, huwag mong iiwanan ng bawat sa. Mahalin mo, brother, in my sister, right now. Si Tereka, mahalin mo si brother Elmer. Kahit na anong kamalian ng lalaki, lalaki, minsan, pag, na, pag umiinig ng ulo, experience ko yan. Siguro, ganyan na lang maririnig ito sa kanang buhay ko. Hindi ko sinasabi sa inyo. Si sister, si kaya ganyan ang galit niya sa akin. Kasi nahiwa ko ulit niyan. Nahiwa ko ulit niya. Hmm. Kuchinyo. Hawang nakikita niya lamad sa libya. Sabi niya, hindi kita mapapatawal. Kaya yung ginagawa niya sa ngayon, sa buhay niya na kasiraan sa pamilya ko at sa sarili niya, eh, ina- inaari kong kasalanan ko talaga. Kasalanan ko talaga, mga kapatid. Kaya based, based on experience, sister, like Father Elmer, kahit na ano mangyari, Huwag yung tingnan lang yung bagay na nangyayari ngayon. Kasi may, mas may maraming mangyayari bukas sa kayo ay isasama. Pero kahit ano pa mangyari, just put God in the center of your life. And God will do the rest. And this is the right God. Amen. I'm sure Paul will give you one leg. Thank you for that, uh, Brother Nestor. May I now call on Brother Brother Paul. Brother Michael Bernati. First of all, I would like to thank God that I know I can This is my first time that uh, Uh, natino ako sa kasal, hindi talaga mapipigilan yung pagtanda. And, uh, experience, based on my experience, uh, 17 years na rin kami ng sister wife ko. Sa 17 years na yun, maraming uh, trials, maraming naman. Pero still, uh, natinig kami. Dahil yung pagmamahal ay uh, nandun, nangunguna. At uh, I do believe that uh, love is conquers all. At uh, lagi kong sinisare sa'yo, Brother Elmer, na ang hindi ang book edition ng kababayan ay mapakakapal. At ang salalaki ng pakanabis lang. Kaya kung ano mang uh, kakulangan ng asawa mo, na si Sister Laika, intindihan mo siya. At, uh, at pagmamahal ang ano, uh, manatili sa inyong dalawa. Ganun din sa spiritual, mostly, na may advice ko sa inyo na laging ang Panginoon ang nakasentro sa inyo. Dahil uh, tayo kinasal na rin tayo sa Panginoon. At uh, yun ang karapat dapat natin na uh, sever natin ang Panginoon. At uh, best wishes sa inyong dalawa at mabuhay ang bagong kasal. May nakasalan na Brother Ever Dino. Ako. Uh, but uh, uh, 
sabi ko lang bilang asawa at si Sister Laika lagi 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 yun yun ang pakinong at ano man ang pagkakamali na tulad ng sermon kanina na kung madama man siya ay itatayo mo siya kasi ang pakinong hindi tayo iniwanan madalas tayo ito pa madalas tayo mapalis pero andyan pa rin ang pakinong apply yun sa atin kaya ang ang may papayap sa inyo Lagi mo unang Panginoon. Minsan hindi natin alam na, na hindi siya matagal may fix pero darating ang time na ang Panginoon ay ipipix niya sa tamang panahon. Salamat po. Grats at uh, God bless you. Thank 
Indonesia, what about you? Um, sasabi ko lang, ako, nag-iisa ako, pero I know God is with me. In place, I'm alone. Um, sabi nila, ang pag-aasawa is pupunta sa katahimikan. Pero <laughs> hindi, maraming struggle. <laughs> maraming trials. Pero ang masasabi ko lang sa inyo, kailangan ng respeto ng bawat isa at tibay ng loob. God is with us. God bless you. May I request uh, the bride and the group to stand up, please? <clears throat> Before I pronounce you husband and wife, I have just one more thing and I want you to do. Your wedding day seems to be quick and it will be flying away soon. It's a day that is filled uh, with emotions, a day that is filled with dreams, with friends, with gifts. <clears throat> with memories, and many people remember how fleeting their wedding days were. <clears throat> so I want you to take a few seconds to look at each other. Think about the happiness that you're feeling right now. At this place, in this moment. And really let that feel register in your hearts and your mind. Just take that moment to register the happiness that you're feeling right now. Now I want you to think about your life together in 10 years time. <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you? We all know that your visions of the future are not identical but always complementary. Only it will come into reality if you're going to let God, the Lord Jesus Christ, be the center of this relationship. Amen. May I invite uh, Brother Aaron to bring the Bible, please? And uh, you can uh, come and uh, put your hands in the Bible. Put your right hand, please. Hallelujah. Brother Elmer, Sister Laika, your reality starts now. Brother Elmer and Sister Laika, through their words today, have joined together in holy red luck because they have exchanged their vows before God and these witnesses have pledged their commitment each to the other and have declared the same by joining hands and by exchanging rings, by the authority that is vested on me by God as minister of his gospel, I now pronounce thee husband and wife in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you will be pleasing, that your life that will be pleasing to the Lord and his guidance may always be with you. May your life be filled with joy your roads be fulfilled with all the guidance of the Lord. May you be blessed uh, with too many children. <laughs> Based on the plan of the Lord. <clears throat> May your marriage be an example of the right unity that will reflect the relation of the oneness of God and His church. May this marriage be the reflection of that, as what we have heard. May your reunion be filled with joy, peace, and provisions from the Lord in all years to come. Be fruitful and multiply in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may now face the brethren. Please face the brethren. And now... To all the friends and the family who have come to celebrate this union, I take the great pleasure in presenting the United Couple, Mr. and Mrs. Elmer and Laika Ibanez.
you may now kiss the bride. Yes.